Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Um, this is our second episode of six of our Career Accelerator series. My name is Melissa Hippolyte. I am um, the associate, no, I'm not the associate program director. I'm the director of strategic partnerships um, at College Bound Foundation. Cameron? Hello, everyone. My name is Cameron. I'm one of the college completion advisors at College Bound, and I work with students at UMES, Towson, and Salisbury. Awesome, thank you. We have a few guests for you today. Um, on this episode, we're gonna be talking about the job application process from the beginning to the interview phase. Um, I'll allow our guests in a moment to talk about themselves and introduce themselves to you. Before we start, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the College Bound Foundation. We have a two college through college model here, at College Bound. Uh, we have advisors who work in the middle schools with middle school students. We have advisors who work in the high schools getting our students prepared for college. And we have advisors like Cameron who just introduced themselves that work on the college level preparing students to graduate from college. And then we also have a team of people who work with students to help them find internships and jobs. And that's kind of what brought about this webinar series to get our viewers, our students, our graduates, our high school students, and our college students prepared for life after graduation, be it internships, jobs, maybe you wanna shadow or you're interested in certain fields or different areas and you want some more information on it, these sessions are in place to kind of assist you with that. So I'll stop talking and allow my guests a moment um, to introduce themselves. I'll start with Ms. Quattlebaum. Hello, my name is Jeanette Quattlebaum. I'm the Director of Accounting and Human Resources with College Bound Foundation. Thank you, Angela. Good afternoon, my name is Angela Scott. I am the HR Procurement and Payroll and Benefits Administrator for the Baltimore Curriculum Project. Awesome, thank you. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, good afternoon. I'm Odell Jones, work for Wild Cornell in New York City. I am the Associate Director of HR Systems Analytics I also uh, manage the HR Shared Service Center. Awesome. Thank you. As we go along, everyone, if you have any questions, please uh, place it in the chat. Cameron here is going to keep an eye on the chat just to make sure that all your questions are answered. Um, and I'll take some pauses here and there just to check to see if there's everything or anything that you need. If we mention something that's of interest, we'll try to put that in the chat for you as well. So I guess we will roll into it. Thank you for joining us. Again, it's episode two of six, which means we have a lot more coming up for you to register for. And before we end this, we're going to put information in the chat for our upcoming sessions. So let's get into it. Our guests introduced themselves, um, but let's ask them to give us a little bit of background about them, uh, maybe where they went to college and what they majored in. Uh, Jeanette, can you add that? Do you guys prefer Jeanette? First name, last name, what do you want me to call you? First name, please. Okay. First <laughs> name is all good. Oh, no. First okay. name. <laughs> You're like, who? Where's my dad? Everybody says, that's my father. That's my <laughs> okay. So we're going to go first name. Um, and our audience, you guys, it's high school students, maybe a couple. We have some college students and we have some alums and some graduates and some other people who are just looking for advice because this stuff is really universal. Anybody can use it, right? For sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'm done yeah. running out. I do that a lot. Jeanette, where'd you go to school? What did you major in? Sure. So I went to school at Howard University. Um, well, that's where I completed my degree. I did one year at a college <clears throat> in South Carolina called Francis Marion University. And then I came up and completed my degree at Howard University, Howard University School of Business. And my degree is a Bachelor of Business Administration with a concentration in accounting. Awesome. Thank you. Angela? I attended the College of Notre Dame of Maryland for two years, and then I transferred to Towson University, uh, where I received a Bachelor's of Science, and I actually studied biology, did not do the business part. Um, I actually fell into HR by accident, um, uh, graduated college. I'm actually a college-bound alum, um, uh, 
forever ago. I uh, worked at College Bound um, for quite a few years during my undergrad so I could, you know, get my feet wet. And um, that propelled me to where I am now. Someone I used to work with at College Bound had someone who worked here at Baltimore Curriculum Project. They were leaving and I took their spot. And from there, I was the office manager and that developed into becoming the HR administrator. Sweet. Odell, how about you? Yeah, I think this this is this is part and parcel too. It's great for like high school students and college people because sometimes you don't always follow that same path that you started out with. So I think that that was a beautiful thing. And my story is also similar to that, right? So, uh, you know, I went to school in a, in a small college in Kentucky called Moorhead State University. Long story there, but we don't have time to get into that. But that's where I ultimately got my degree from, right? Um, but at that time, I thought I wanted to, to go to law school and be a lawyer. So I actually majored in government and, and paralegal studies. So that's what I thought I was going to do. But I actually really like computers. So then I kind of did a bunch of other things. I went and got a degree, in uh, a master's degree in human resources development from Webster University by way of the United States Marine Corps. Oh, so, so many different stories. But all that being said, I got out, got a job in recruiting, uh, ended up working for a small consulting firm that um, uh, basically implemented uh, human resources software. So then I kind of followed that path into it, found out that the human resources information systems was a, like an exploding industry, uh, which it is to this very day when you think about uh, where we are as far as data is concerned. Everything is, is surrounding data, right? You know, you go to the grocery store, you got to stick in your little bonus card. All that data is being captured. So when you think about the job that you have, same thing, all this data is being captured, benefit information, compensation information, retirement information, obviously your name, your date of birth, all that stuff is being captured and data is being analyzed, how you get promoted, what department you move to, all these things are being captured as far as data. So that is basically what is my first love, even though I kind of work on systems and processes, but data is really the, the crux of the matter of kind of where I kind of fell into. So that's analytics, which is sort of like being a lawyer. You got to analyze stuff. So that's yeah. basically what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm hearing there is no straight line. Absolutely. None whatsoever. <laughs> that's for sure. None. <laughs> you figure out what you like and then you do your best with it. Yes. That yes. is for sure. That's a whole other webinar in itself, like finding mm -hmm. your way and yes, finding absolutely. like networking and let me write yes. these things down. Networking, <laughs> finding yes. your way. Okay. So we <laughs> fall into these things because I clearly didn't know that what I do is a thing, right? I told I'd be a college bound for two years. It's been 11, but that's a whole other story. Nobody's here. <laughs> but it's true, right? So yes. that's, that's definitely yes. fair. You're not here to hear about me. So yes. Odell, you kind of got into this a bit. You said this is what you do in a day. So your day starts and then what? So I read your title, right? Granted, I've known you for a couple of years, just two. A couple. Maybe, <laughs> just a couple, right? So we, I read your title, Director HR Systems An Analytics HRSC. I was like, I know he works in HR and I know he works with keywords. And then you said something to me about AI. So I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> so explain to us what you do I know you touched on it a bit, what you do every day, what's your typical and, day like? Yeah, I mean, I think from my perspective, I get to work the whole gamut of HR, right? There's many, many different facets of HR. I think, you know, there's there's payroll, there's, you know, compensation, there's talent acquisition, there's onboarding, there's employer relations. It goes on and on, right? So my area really focuses on all of those specific areas because each of the businesses have their own track. And as I mentioned earlier in the conversation, data is, is kind of revolving around that. Um, and the data doesn't just live in HR. It lives with every vendor that they might be working with. If you think about compensation, they need to go out and figure out how to pay everyone. So there are benchmarks that, that are required to, to use to help develop how you're going to pay people. We don't just pull a salary out of the air and go, we're going to pay you this. Or the candidate can't just say, I want to make, you know, I don't know, $100,000 in a particular role, we pay based on what the industry is paying. And in order to get that, we then have to give information back to the vendor to get back that information of what's the standard across the industry. So that's one track. And that's kind of what I do as far as being able to develop this information for the business. Uh, and that also goes across each of the areas, whether it's benefits or talent acquisition or anything, right? Then to kind of bring it back around to what we're talking about related to, uh, you know, resumes and job hunting and skills, right? 
Now we know uh, if everyone hasn't seen all the stuff that's on TV around uh, AI and you know artificial intelligence and all that good stuff. So now in the recruitment world, they're really looking at how can they pare down all these different resumes that come into the organization. I mean, just tons of people looking for jobs, obviously. So one recruiter might have you know 200 uh, resumes to look at. Back in the day, we used to put them in an envelope, send it off, and somebody had to sit at the table, open up that envelope, and look at it. Just think about that, right? Nobody has time. To, they didn't have time then, and even now with all the systems we have, people still don't. So what they try to do is they try to think of ways to use AI to kind of pare down the number of people that are looking. Now, all that being said, people are also very crafty in how they do what they do. So when you fill out, when you complete your resume, you look for action words, keywords, and things of that nature that fit the job description of what you're looking for. So AI really is a big part of that. So you tell AI, hey, listen, I've got a customer service representative that I want to uh, hire for. So as resumes start to come in, AI will start to look at, well, did they go to this school? Do they have five years of experience? Do they uh, have experience in a high volume? They're sort of looking for the word high volume uh, area, customer service, things of that nature. Uh, and as they start to see these types of words, they automatically present these to the recruiters. So they don't even have to look. They just automatically present them to the recruiter and say, this person is a fit. You should talk to this person. So if you don't have those keywords, then you start to kind of fall out. And that's where the challenge is as far as I see with AI. Um, yeah. And the other part that I want to mention as well is we think about AI, they always try to be as um, accommodating as possible for the candidate. So the candidate can say, well, I don't want to be graded by AI, right? So I don't want AI to, to actually look at my resume. I want a human to look at my resume. So they have the opportunity to choose between the two. And so my question back to the vendor was, if the candidate chooses not to select to be graded by the AI, what is the impact of that? Does the, does the, do they get the same weight as far as the recruiter is concerned? And they couldn't answer that question for me. So I guess in my end, I want to make sure that people are aware of how AI is going to play a role in the uh, recruitment process. So I, that's why I'm glad we had this call today, because literally I just had that call last week with the vendor. And I think it's important that we get that message across to all these folks that are looking for work out there. So it's hot off the press and this whole AI thing is new. <laughs> so as soon as you learn it, we're going to do a part two to follow up on that one. Let me write that that's one down in my notes too. Shanae, are we AI yet? Or what do you no. do? Okay. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Or inching along. Uh huh. So, what do you do every day? Well, my day is not typical. Um, working at a nonprofit, which has been my career track since college, um, nonprofits are usually small but mighty. So, it depends on what's going on at that day. Like my my title has accounting and human resources. So, depending on what's going on in the day, the first thing I do is check my email because then that's going to dictate priorities. So once I, after I check my emails, I'll consult with the executive director, Cassie Motts, to see if there's anything that deserves my attention first. And then after that, I'll decide what's going on for the day. So it could involve processing invoices. Um, at the beginning of the fall semester and the spring semester, it's processing batches of scholarships to go out to our college students. Um, in a timely fashion. It could be following up with the city regarding our high school advisors and um, payments for that. It could be um, anything do dealing with paying the bills, receiving money, processing grants, seeing if we've received grants. Those are always the highlights of emails during the day. Um, we've gotten a grant today. So, you know, those are exciting. But then shifting to the human resources, um, it could be payroll. So payroll was due this week. So processing payroll, um, open enrollment, depending on when that's happening one time a year, processing medical benefits, dental benefits, vision benefits, um, making sure that employees have access to resources that we have, making sure that they're aware of the resources that we have. And that, you know, although we come to work every day, that the job is just a part of who we are, but we want to make sure that we're taking care of the whole person. Because if they're not whole, then they can't perform the work that we need them to perform. So it could be just checking in and stopping by someone's desk as part of human resources to make sure they're okay. So I'm fortunate enough to have a dual role. and But no day is typical, but it could be a lot. It could be 
you know, maybe it's a half day and we're doing a half day of training where I get to see everyone and we're engaging staff. So that's what I do. I, for one, appreciate the paychecks. <laughs> I appreciate the check-ins yeah. and I appreciate yeah. all the benefits because I use my FSA at Massage Envy. And another plug to College Bound, as we're talking, Shanette mentioned scholarships. We manage about a $4 million scholarship portfolio. So if anybody's watching, go to our website. Um, Cameron will drop that in there for you. Yes. And how about you? Is anything typical for you? No, mm -mm. I'm in the same boat as Shanette. Um, yeah, no. The first thing is the email and the voicemail saying what's how the press is, what's happened since I last left the office. Um, coming in, I've been here 22 years and it took me to my 20th year to hire an assistant. And I'm super thankful that I did. Um, so yeah. Um, so checking emails. So my title is kind of misleading. I am HR, I'm procurement. Um finance. I'm kind of doing the CFO because my CFO has retired. So I'm doing a, a handful of what he was doing. I'm paying the bills. We do have an offsite accountant who does the back end stuff, but most of the day to day gets done by myself. Um, so I do that. Um, I order all the supplies. We have six schools under, under our umbrella. So I order all the supplies for the schools that run through our, the money that runs through our organization. I do that. Um, the HR piece, the onboarding, and we're talking about AI. I was doing some onboarding with, um, had a call with LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago, and the guy kept saying, you have to use keywords. I said, so I just want to hire somebody right now. Keywords, <laughs> listen, I want to put as many words, I, just give me the, what, what am I doing? So he was mm -hmm. like, you got to use keywords, you got to use keywords. I said, okay, that ain't work, y'all. It did not really work. So, <laughs> I appreciate that part of it, but I want to read a resume. So email me your resume. I'm still that person. I still want to get my eyes on it um, because I do find that a lot of times with that, the AI and the keyword piece, I'm missing something. I'm missing, I could be potentially missing a great candidate um, because they, they may not put that buzzword when they're in their resume or whatever they're doing, I, I want you to email me your resume. I'm still that old school person. Mm -hmm. So yes, I will use the LinkedIn's, the Facebook's, the mm -hmm. Indies or whatever is out there. I'm going to use it all to my resource, but I still want to put my eyes on that resume. Um, But yeah, so I do, that is what I do. Payroll every two weeks. Um, Benefits, we do all of that. We're about to start our audit. I just got an email today that they want to start selections. So I'm about to start doing that tomorrow. Um, and that's going to be going on for the next, mm, probably through Thanksgiving, um, if not a little bit longer. Uh, so yeah, that's a typical day for me. It's just about everything. Putting out fire, <laughs> all, that good, all that good stuff. Oh, that's, yeah. So, so nobody does just one thing. This is what I'm hearing. No, and I'm also true. hearing that, the thing you applied for may have morphed a yeah. bit. I started off as the office manager, literally sitting there answering the phones all day. Okay. Then when we took on, um, when we became charter schools, mm -hmm. then we started hiring people. And so then we needed, okay, can you do HR? I don't know, can I? So let me Google it. What, is that, what does that mean? What does that look like? Yeah. But it was personnel folders and with a few employees, and now we have a lot of employees. I mean, we I'm just talking to somebody. We have a core staff at, across here in our schools. They're about 50 um, full-time staff. But in my payroll system, I got over 500 because we have various grants that we operate across our six schools, a ton of after-school programming that we pay teachers and staff to participate in, to run for the school. So we're paying those people. We have sports, I mean, everything. So we pay people to, to do that because it's after school and they, mm -hmm. you know, they deserve to get compensated for that. So we started out with the payroll used to be like 30 people. When I first started, we're at 500 plus. And now granted, People have moved on, so we probably be well over that with us, you know, taking and, and moving people off and on as, as you know, the time goes on, but yeah. So, okay, I have a three-parter next. Okay. So I'm going to break it down, right? Based on all the things we just learned, first part, I am applying for a job. We talked about keywords. We talked about sending me your resume. We talked about this. If I'm in a space, let's say I'm a college student, kind of look like one, right, y'all? <laughs> 
20, what, 18, yes. 19? No, let's go with 25. I just graduated. So if I'm just applying for a job, right? What should I do? I'm sitting here. I have a clear screen. I'm on Microsoft Word and I need to write a resume. What should I do first? Does anybody want to jump in? Odell, go in because you do the keywords in that front Use part. AI. Use AI. So, so this yeah. is where I, I honestly believe AI is a benefit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got so years ago, you literally had to do what you said. You open a Word document and you, you started typing. Yeah. What I find the biggest challenge with that is that when you have to talk about yourself or, or even start thinking about what you do, what you did, what you want to do, or where you've been, you always miss things. It's, it's the nature of who we are, right? Because it's like when someone asks you for direction somewhere, you, you know it so well that you start talking about it as if you were there. But mm -hmm. when you think about your resume, it really needs to be a picture, a painted picture of every piece and thing that you've done that you then have to give to the employer. So that's why I say AI is a good start for you because AI will absolutely build a resume for you that makes some sense. And then you can then go from there and start kind of developing that. So that this is where I think there is a benefit to AI. How do I just go Google AI, make me a resume? <laughs> So what do you I can, do? <laughs> you can. So Google has has a has a good uh, AI tool. So I, you know, would just go to bard.google.com. That's a good start, um, and then it'll just give you sort of like the same Google screen, and it'll say, "Well, what would you like?" And then you say, "Hey, listen, I'm looking for a customer service resume. I have, I work. You can even tell it. I worked at, um, I don't know. Let's make up something. I worked at Warner Brothers from 19. I mean, well." These are young, younger people. So I worked at <laughs> I worked at Warner Brothers from 2022 to 2023. And then you say in the in the role of customer service. And then you could say, oh, prior to that, I was in college and I took these courses. And it'll build a resume based on those things. And then once it does that, it literally will build a resume that looks just like a resume. And then from that point, you as the person sitting with that white piece of, you know, Word document can then say, well, I, I also did X, Y, and Z. And then from there, you will have a built out resume for which you then could uh, upload to LinkedIn or then apply for the jobs that you're looking for accordingly. But I also want to add in the last piece, which is the most important piece. And that is network, network, network. Go to networking events. Make yourself known. I would say in my career, I mean, I've been working now for almost 30 years, and I would say probably half of the roles that I've gotten throughout my career have been through networking. Yeah. Like literally someone said, hey, I know a guy that's for that job. Mm -hmm. And then they would send, put me in front of the right people. And that's the best way to get a job. Dry, dry resume applying will get you a job for sure. It's just going to take a lot longer. Versus someone taking you by the hand, walking you to that employer, walking you to that uh, that interview, that hiring manager, and telling that hiring manager you're the person for the job. Let someone help you um, promote you. That's what I would do as far as the second part of that. Good insight. Good insight. Uh, Shanette, Angela, you want to add anything to that? I want to say, in addition to that, is um, one of my, my, my oldest daughter, who's a sophomore at NYU, she did a youth works internship here at my job when she was in high school and um we had one of our vendors calvin from lakeshore learning he was like he asked her say can i have your business card she said i don't have one of them in high school he was like that doesn't matter you should have a business card even if you are you know a high school senior college student something that has your contact information on it to give to prospective employers. And so from there, um, she went to some event, I can't remember where, and someone asked her again for her business card. She was like, okay, I get it now. They want me to have something that has my, so that they can reach back out to me if they're looking for whatever in an employee or if they want to, you know, have an intern or something. So she then started working on her resume when she was a junior in high school, building her resume, building her portfolio and um, created business cards in Microsoft Word or whatever and printed them off and she carried them with her. So those type of things, just taking that initiative and making those connections. When we were at the luncheon this past July, I was on the parent panel and I always carry my business cards with me. I need to refill out now actually. And we were on the panel and there was a young lady who was going to school for education. 
And she was talking about, well, I don't know what I'm going to do when I graduate. I got a business card. I said, call me when you're done. I said, I work with schools. If if I can't hire you, there are plenty of people I know that that will. So make those connections on the spot. Like I said, I went to, my sister works for a design company downtown. I went to that, not anticipating doing anything, but supporting her. I was going as, you know, hey, this is my sister. She does great things. I handed out my business cards there. It was just, well, hey, what do you do? I work with schools. Oh, we want to get into the schools. Hot, hot. Okay, give here's my card. I'll hook you up with the district and people that over there who know who who you can touch base with to get what you need to know. So using your resources, um, having your business card handy, making sure your resume is up to date, whether you do the AI tool or have it on paper or however you want to have it, add to it. I do my resume every year. Even if it's just a, do I have any spelling issues? What have I done? What have I added to my portfolio this year? What new tasks? Like this year, I'm doing more of the accounts payable stuff. So I'm going to be adding that to my resume when I do my review for this year. So those type of things, just keep building it and just making sure everything is up to date. A, you're never going to know when you, you're never going to know when you need it. And B, for my job, when we go through renewal, we have to have an updated resume in our binders every single year. So those type of things. Um, help when you're looking for a job even if you're just like I said just starting out having a way for people to contact you have a good email address good email address first name last name don't put your date of birth don't put your year you was born something that people are going to know it's you mm-hmm. um nothing vulgar nothing sexual just something simple because that will turn me off in a heartbeat if I get an email for, uh, with a resume from an email address that looks, no, delete, sorry. Even though you might be a great candidate, those type of things, this it's not professional. So be professional. Awesome, thank you. Should that anything? I was actually just going to say, make sure everything you do is professional. I mean, don't undersell yourself. If you are currently working part-time at McDonald's, if you're working at a department store, if you're working at a Walmart, you know, start valuing yourself and let what you're doing be a reflection of the person that you want to interact with. And as Angela mentioned, make sure you, everything about you is professional, including your email address. Um, clean up your social media. Make sure your social media that has inappropriate stuff is private to the outside world. Google yourself. Yes. And see if there's anything out there that potential employers can see because some employers will Google you and if they see yes, they yes. if they will see your inappropriate social media yes. is the first thing out there, mm-hmm. you know, you might want to delete that. You might want to get rid of all of that together and create a professional profile so that when they do Google you, they see your portfolio, they see the work mm-hmm. that you've done, they see the events that you've attended. Make sure that if you attend an event that you tag yourself on those photos if you're in it. If it's a professional yes. photo, mm-hmm. when you go to networking events, go to their page to see if you are in a photo and tag yourself. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do to start being professional before you get the job you want. Um, someone told me a long, long time ago, and I'm sure everyone on this call has heard that to dress and act like the job that you want to be in. Yes. So before you have it. It's unfortunate but, that that's not the case nowadays. And, exactly. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's, it, no, but 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 your statement is, is is spot on. I think that 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 really does make a difference in terms of where you're going. But um, it's unfortunate that as I interview some of the the younger generation, yes. they, you know, and, and maybe it's okay. I don't know. It, it it seems to be the way things are. There's no more of that suit and tie thing anymore. They they come right. to interviews, you know, with not even collared shirts in some cases, but their skills kind of represent where they are. So, but I do believe I do believe. You you should be very professional in terms of your 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 you know your dress. I just think it has to be commensurate with the time. So you know it, yeah. that part that part is, can be debated, but you still should come in clean. <laughs> you know, shaven, hair done properly. You know, if you're a young man, make sure you have a haircut. You you're a, a lady, make sure your hair is done. You know, things like that. I think those still represent you know, uh, professionalism, right? Um, And then the last thing I would want to add as well um, to, you mentioned social media, you mentioned uh, making sure you clean everything up. And and then I know uh, we had some other mentioning of making sure you have business cards, et cetera, et cetera. I would also say, make sure that you have that 30 second pitch of who you are, 
where you want to be and what you do. We call yeah. it the elevator talk, right? If you ended up in an elevator with a CEO of a company and he asked you, you know, tell me about yourself. You need to have that ready to go. Don't go, mm, um, just have that ready to go. Whatever that conversation is, you need to go ahead and have that prepared for yourself and be able to speak to it right away. Because that could also be the difference between an interview, not interview, a job or not a job. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so we used AI and we have a fabulous resume and somebody calls us in for an interview, right? So I show up, as you describe, what should I do to ace this interview? Do I arrive on time? Can we talk about that? What do we, what do I do to make this the best interview ever and make them want to call me back? I always, for me, one thing that um, I always do is arrive at least 15 to 20 minutes early, sometimes 30 minutes to give myself 15 minutes in the car to hyperventilate before the interview. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then go into the office at least 15 minutes early because that lets them know that I'm really interested in the job. I want to be prompt, make sure I have my materials and my everything that I'm going to do and say practice well before that date. If it's last minute and they call me the day that I sent it, and it's next day to at least get in front of someone, even if it's someone in my house or a friend, mm -hmm. to actually practice and go over interview questions. Um, I always will Google interview questions, especially of uh, the behavioral type interview questions, because those are a little different than regular. Okay, what did you do at this job? Or um, give you a situation when like the behavioral interview questions, those can really unnerve you if you're not prepared. Say more, mm -hmm. what do you mean? So instead of saying, where have you worked? They might say, when you were at this job and you encountered a coworker who was difficult, how did you handle that situation? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so you're sitting there and you're like, oh, hmm. One thing that will turn like a recruiter off immediately and me being in, on the side of the table reviewing someone is when someone says, I don't know, I've never had that happen. <laughs> Because uh, sure at is, every you know. job, you had something. <laughs> you've had good and you've had bad. So if you're like, oh, I've never had that happen. Everything has always been good. It's be realistic. Right. And give them the situation and talk your way through the one that shows you in the best light. But also just be honest because we can definitely pick up if you're not being honest. Yes. I agree with that. I agree. I would add too. So when you leave, I'm jumping ahead, but when you leave the interview, um, send a thank you note, say, thank you for Always. your time. Thank Always. you for whatever they wisdom they imparted to you. Um, cause when I was interviewing for my assistant position, um, only a couple of people did that. And we interviewed quite a few people. And I was, I said, Oh, okay. But then also, um, like Shanette said, get there early. I would make sure you know about the organization you're going to interview with, meaning, because I always ask, what do you know about my company? I agree with don't, that. Don't read me the website. I need you to do your homework. Um, so I get people do that. They, because we did, when I hired her, we were still in COVID. So we was on, we was virtual. And I asked people, well, what do you know about us? And I tell you, they read from the website. I was like, that's, that's not, that's not what, that's what, give me something else. What do you know? What else do you know? Um, so, you know, those type of things, again, dress professionally, as professional as you can, because if you don't have it, it's okay. Don't let that deter you from going to the interview. Um, but just do your best in the interview. Ask if you don't understand a question, ask a follow-up question. Say, I, I I don't understand that. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Um, don't be a don't be afraid that because my kids that they're, they're very outspoken for the most part, but when it comes to those type of situations, scenarios, they tend to hmm, they don't know how. They say they don't know how to, they do. It just unnerves them a little bit. So they they don't know how to um they get nervous. We all do. You know, public speaking is not my forte, but I, they always ask me to do it. So I'm trying to be comfortable in this arena here. Uh, so practice, practice, practice. My um, One of my colleagues at one of my schools, her daughter interned here when she was learning about when she wanted to figure out she wanted to do accounting or HR. And she's actually doing both now. And so she said, Miss Ange, 
can you interview me? I was like, for what? She said, well, when I leave, I want to, you know, make sure I have what I need to, for the interview. I said, okay, let me go pull up some questions. And she uh, went on an interview a couple of months later and she said, those were the exact questions they asked. I was like, well, look at that. So she was very well prepared. She was comfortable in the interview because she had rehearsed. So it, it doesn't take much to do that. Just get with someone who's going to give you honest feedback. Don't just have someone that's going to tell you, oh yeah, you did good, you did fine. No, get with someone who's going to give you honest feedback because you need to know before you get to that interview where your strong suits are, where your weak spots are, how can how how you can improve. And then at the end, when you finish the interview and you get to your car and you send them a nice thank you note saying thank you for your time, I appreciate what you you know taking time out to meet with me today. Um, do you have any tips on what I could do better for the next time? And I, and I and I love it when people do that. I even when we were interviewing for an auditor, um, the young lady was a few minutes late. Um, she got stuck in traffic and she called ahead last week. She's gonna be late. That was fine. Uh, we met with some other people and by the end we didn't choose her. She called back and said, well, what happened? I said, but we went with someone who worked with schools and knew the structure of charter schools and things like that. She said, okay, is there something else I can do? And she owned the company. This was the owner asking me this. Is there something I can do better next time? I was like, no, you hit the nail on the head. It was just the, the, area, the comfort zone for us was that we need someone who knows how to work with schools. That was the biggest takeaway for that. She said, okay, thank you. So those type of things, I think, will go a long way in the interview and after. I agree with, I agree with everything you said and everything both of you said. I think it's very important that you are, are prepared for the interview. Um, I would say, I know you mentioned, um, Melissa, that we've got high school and also college students, right? So, um, and, and it doesn't matter where you are in that area. Um, I would say if you're in high school, take a speech course. If you're in college, take a speech course or an interviewing course. I think those things will absolutely help you through the process. And then when all else fails, you know, find a mentor, find someone who can kind of work with you in some of those interview questions. Being prepared is 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 unbelievably helpful, right? Um, because you never know what they're going to ask you. So you need to be able to uh, ask a, a wide range, answer a wide range of questions. And then the last piece I would say is if they ask you that one question that, uh, uh, was mentioned earlier about kind of where you, you know, give me a scenario of where you had a difficult person. You don't always necessarily need to ask answer it in that specific way. You may be able to say, listen, I have not had a difficult employee, but I've had a difficult project that I've worked on, something that aligns with what your true experience is. They just want to know that you've had something presented to you that was challenging and that you were able to resolve that in an in a amicable fashion. And then they may also ask you, well, what difficult things did you do that you weren't unable to come up with a solution with? We also have that challenge. So you need to be able to answer those types of questions as well. Maybe if you're a college student, you, you haven't worked before, you might say, well, I had a really difficult course that I had to do, or I had a difficult professor that I had to deal with. So there's always ways to spin the answer to what it is that they're looking for. And so you always have to think about the life that you've had and what you've experienced and be able to apply that to an interview. So that would be my take on that. So Good info. thank you. Um, with the mock interviews, I'd like to add, if you're listening and you are a college bound student or a member of our CCP program, call your college bound advisor um, in high school and call the advisor in college. And we'll be happy to help you with mock interviews. We may even ask a member of our alumni association to assist with doing the mock interviews. Thank you, Angela, in advance. Um, so moving on to the next <laughs> thing. See how I did that real quick? So well, there's assistance, call us, we'll help. Um, yeah. With the, dress the dressing professional part, uh, mm -hmm. part of my role here, I was able to visit McDaniel, uh, McDaniel, Morgan, and Towson, and they all showed me their career closets. So mm. if you have an interview and you're a college student mm. and you don't have something to wear, there's nothing wrong with that. Just go to your career development office and they'll help you with clothing. They'll even help you with the mock interviews. They'll help you with everything um, from the AI generated resume to the interviews to the next topic that I'm going to start here. Okay. So we did the interview. We sent our thank you. Everything went really well, right? I get the call. They're telling me that they want to offer the position. So can we say a little bit about, do we ask about money? You'll say, okay, thank you. How much? When is it okay to discuss? When is it okay to discuss money? I love it. 
then I'll go into my next question. That wasn't originally my next question, but I want to ask that because we need to know about the coins. So when can I ask about how much and when can I negotiate? Wow, those, those are definitely good questions. That's for sure. Uh, you know, so here in New York, it, it's a little different now, right? Because um, we are required to put the actual uh, amount that the job is is um, vetted for. So if it's a position that's customer service rep, they have to put a range in. So let's say it's 50 to 90,000. We actually have to put in that range now, right? So that's important for anyone that's applying for jobs. So they know automatically if, if I need to make more than 90,000, I'm not gonna apply for this job, right? Um, so th that's a really, a really good question you ask. And so obviously you never wanna talk about salary or benefits in the first interview. Never, ever, ever. That is an immediate turnoff. The recruiter will go away uh, or send you away. That's the guarantee. Uh, second and third interview, I think it, it, it's customary. Perhaps they'll ask you, you know, what do you want to make? So you have to have that answer, just like the 30 second uh, 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 elevator talk. You need to kind of know what your range is. I would never give a specific one number. I would always give a range, right? This way you have some flexibility when the time comes to negotiation. Um, and then again, here, you you you. Negotiation generally is based on your experience, right? If you are just out of college or just out of high school and you're looking for your first job, your negotiation options are, are small, right? So that's why it's important to give a range and it's important to be able to discuss why you feel like you, you rate that much money or that salary. So I wouldn't say that much because it just depends on who's who's asking, right? <laughs> um, but one of the things that, that I would say in terms of... Um, um, salaries and benefits, because those are two separate conversations. Quite often, someone may say, all right, I can meet you at a salary point, um, but perhaps it's not the number that you want. But then you have to think about, well, what benefits does this company offer? Are there health benefits that I would not normally be getting? Uh, are there vacation time that is more than what I would want? Maybe four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. It depends, right? All those things are negotiable. I think folks quite often only think about the salary, but there are many, many things that a, a company can offer you nowadays, whether it's a, a lump sum payment up front, maybe they can't meet you, maybe you're asking for 80,000, but they can't afford to pay you 80. So they'll say, all right, maybe we can give you 70 and we'll give you a 10,000 sign-on bonus. So you have to keep your, your options open when you think about salary negotiation um, and things of that nature. But to get to the original question that was asked, when? I would definitely say, uh, probably after they've made the first offer to you. And then you're able to at least talk uh, reasonably about, about what it is you're looking for, right? Uh, so I don't want to take up all the conversation because I know that the, the others have some have some thoughts as well. So I'll, 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 I'll yield the floor to that. <laughs> I've actually had people uh, present their salary in the first interview, um, which I'm just like, but we we just starting. We we just we just we just shook hands. Can we like take a step back for a minute? Um, and some folks I have seen them put it on their resumes. Um, and even if I can't meet the salary, but they still look good for the position, I'm gonna reach out. I'm just not gonna let that turn me away because, like you said, Odell, they we have benefits that are really good, and that might entice them. Okay, I'm not gonna be making this, but. I don't have to pay because we pay 100% health insurance for our staff. Um, you so money right there. You, that, yeah, so that's money that's not coming out your pocket. Right. So if you're not getting that 20 grand in salary, but you're getting 30 grand in benefits, what you going to take? Right, right. No, you're absolutely right. That makes a huge, huge difference. And I had and someone don't um, pay attention to that. Yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn for a job and I wasn't looking and she was like, well, how much she making? So I told her, I said, but that's without benefits because we get 100% covered. If you don't cover benefits, here's what I need to make so I can cover my benefits because I'm my, my job, my family's on my benefits here, not my husband's. So if if you want, you know, this is what I need to make. She said, oh, OK, thank you. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I was up front. I We're said, if you want to make the offer to the salary, then you have to include this because again, this is what I'm making. But if I have to pay for benefit, this is what I have to make in order to cover that that loss. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, if we get to the third interview stage and then they start asking or second interview and then they start asking, then I can say, here's the range for this position, depending on your um, experience, what you bring it to the table, that type of stuff. And then we can negotiate. If I have somebody 
say we have someone who comes to us from the school system, they want to, they want to retire and they want to come here. Um, and, uh, they may want to take a vacation before they come and we can make that work. We'll, you know, we can fix the system so that they're not losing any money because they have not earned enough leave, but I know that they're going to be here for a year. So I can front load that on my end to a, that's the benefit I'm giving you because you said you're going to be here for a year. So I can front load that on my end to allow you to take that week with your family before you start, well, when you, you know, during the summer or whatever the case may be, when you start your new job so that you don't lose money because you just left the job and you're starting a new one. So those type of things that you work out once you get the job and you're in the position for a while. And those are the perks, you know, so, Hey, I need this. Um, how can we work with that? And it's, it's always the, once you get the job, it's always the question of, um, you know, how, how as an HR, how can I best meet my employees' needs? What can I do to make sure, like you said, Shanette, that you good, you know, you, you feeling okay. What, what can, you need a mental health day, go ahead and go home. I got this. Don't worry. Because sometimes as HR, those are things that we need to do. And that, and as we're bringing on employees, those are the things that we need to say, hey, this is how we operate. Um, and this is what we're bringing to the table. We're going to be here for you, but you got to reciprocate. Yes. And I'll just add on to what Odell and Angela said that it after that first interview, maybe you only get the two interviews and then an offer. So maybe at the second interview, definitely not the first interview, but make sure you've done your research for what the position offers. And also like they both mentioned, consider the entire package, but also in consideration of the benefits, in addition to the salary, consider the culture too that you're walking into because you could be applying for a position and they're willing to give you everything you want and you get there and you don't like the environment that you're in, whereas you have another position that may be offering you less than what you want, but you can really deal with the people and see yourself longer term instead of, you know, trying to find another job in the next year after you get to that job that's paying a lot more money. So you have to consider everything, the entire work experience, because it depends. You're going to be working up for quite a long time in your life compared to being in school. Yes. Now, the work years are a lot of years and you don't want to make yourself miserable. Yeah. So do your research on the company, do your research on the position that you're asking for and what the range looks like, and then do some self-introspection and try to find out what type of work environment you are willing to work with. Yes. Very That's good Give and take Very what you're point. willing to accept versus and what you're getting for that acceptance. You know, yes. there's only so much we're going to take for the money that we're making. Um so what are you willing to accept? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish there was a, I wish there was a, um, a, um, I'm getting a phone call now from my accountant. See, um, I wish there was a way where we could like ask questions of current employees or former employees and say, Hey, how was it really to work there before you say yes to the job? Um, you know, I wish there were ways that we could, as a prospective employee do that. Um, kind of can. I think that's I think that's fair, right? You really yeah. can, and, and that's where I was going um, right after Shanette mentioned. I think when the part of this interviewing, we always think that we're going to an interview, but we are also interviewing that company as well for the very reason that Shanette mentioned. It's about the culture. So when they say, "Hey, do you have any more questions?" I think that's the fine time to say, "Well, what is your culture like? Mm -hmm. How are your employees? You know, what types of things do you offer for your employees?" This might be kind of a sort of a benefit question, mm -hmm. but they should be able to re respond back to you. Say, you know, well, we have summer parties or every so often we have an ice cream social. If you're not getting those types of responses back, you might even want to ask that. Hey, do you do anything for your employees on a regular? Do you do anything biweekly? How is your uh, mental health? You know, do mm -hmm. you offer anything mental health for your employees? These are questions that prospective employees can actually ask. I'm I, The last four interviews I had, uh, in the last few months, the prospective employees actually asked me that question. And I, and, you know, I was happy to say, because we do a lot of really good things here. I was happy to say, yeah, we do lots of good things around the mental health. We, we do, we give you a uh, great, you know, time off. We have a good PTO policy here. Uh, our benefits reflect mental health as well. So I was able to kind of, kind of give those responses back. Uh, but 
it's exactly what you said, Angela. I think if if employees, if prospective employees are not going to be comfortable where they are, then it doesn't matter how much money you pay them. They're not going to take it. They're going to want to leave. Exactly. So that, that, that's really a very good point. And I think that's well pointed that the group should, should take uh, take note of. Good info. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pause for a second and ask Cameron if we have any questions. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment, but I will just remind again, we put it in at the top. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll make sure to get them asked. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay, so interview, I did all these things. Now I'm starting to work, right? It's my first day, I'm a first day, first week, first month even, I'm a new employee. Can you give me some tips on best starting my career at this place? What should I do to make the first week or two the most beneficial for me or for everybody? I think two important things that have helped me and that's being confident and asking questions. Um, be confident in the fact that they selected you so they do find the value in your skills and try not to stress about what it's going to be like, but be confident in what you know because when you can display that and not be afraid to show your skills and how it can benefit an employer, you become even more valuable and it helps to continue to foster a great relationship among you and your team. If you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to basically, when you become a part of that company, you become a part of the reputation of the company. So always just making sure that you're making a best reflection of yourself and letting your work reflect that. And then just asking questions about the job and not being afraid to ask questions. I think that's very important because you won't learn unless you ask. Yeah, I agree I ask questions and take notes. Um, anytime you're in training, I color code everything. My family will tell you. Angela color codes, um, even everything in my, yes, I color code. Everything I do is color coded, y'all. That's, it's just me. Um, so take notes. I have several little teen notebooks that I work with at my desk. Whenever I go to a meeting or if I'm doing something or whatever, a to-do list, I write, I jot down notes. Um, or on your computer, there is this little thing because I'm looking at it right here on mine and it's called sticky notes. Use that because that sits on your computer. You can just type up a little thing on if you, okay, how do I access this system? Type it in there. I also have a, a cheat sheet with my passwords in it that's actually password protected um, because <laughs> doing HR procurement, I'm the controller of all the accounts and I've been here too long, y'all. I don't know the passwords to everything. I can't remember. So I have a password protected sheet that has my passwords in it. So just making sure that you have easy access to what you need, whether it's the employee handbook, the uh, employee self-service portal. I just had somebody email me today who's been with me for six years. Miss Angela, how much leave time do I have? I said, here's the link to the portal. Log in. I'm not going to hold your hand anymore, baby. You've been here six years. Link to the portal. Log in. So those type of things. And I'm going to continue to send you the link to the portal. I mean, it's, 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 um, at some after a while you get to a point where there are things that will just come second nature to you in your job it's going to take you a minute to get there trust me when i tell you i've been doing this a long time but once you get there you now be able to train the next person so take notes study those who've been there a little bit longer than you like my sister always says i'm watching i'm what you doing i'm coming over there right now let me look at what you're doing I ain't really doing much of nothing, but you, you're doing something new. So it's something new for her to learn. So she's going to pull up her chair beside my desk and she's going to watch me do this. So when I'm not here, she said, I did it. I'm like, oh, okay, great. So when I get back to work, I don't worry about it. So watch and learn, be trainable, be trainable. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Do not be afraid to make mistakes at all because we're, mistake. learning. Mm -hmm. we're learning. We're learning every single day do not be afraid to make mistakes y'all don't be afraid to make mistakes oh yeah i agree with all those things and i would say um that first month or two months uh the first thing you want to do in my opinion is um find out what the expectations are right because i mean as, as we all know we, we talked about early in the conversation that you may not always be doing the same thing you thought you were going to do when you first start so i would absolutely first meet with whoever my my manager is 
have that conversation with them. What are you expecting from me day to day, right? Uh, and then the next thing I would do, because uh, a lot of man hiring managers, like myself included, you know, I don't have time to schedule meetings with my staff. I should. I know that's what I'm supposed to do, but I don't always have time to do it. So I would say if you're a new employee, put that on the calendar. Schedule them uh, every month or so, or every two weeks. I don't know. depends on, you know, what, what type of work volume you have. Uh, and schedule that time with your manager so that you can make sure that you always understand the expectations of that manager, uh, from that manager. Uh, and then if you, you know, obviously, I, uh, Angela and Jeanette both said, make sure you take notes. Uh, I often find the younger population don't really take notes that much, right? They just come to a meeting and they just sit there and you're giving all this stuff, you're writing on the whiteboard, you're doing all this stuff. And and they're just sitting there with their hands crossed. I'm like, are they, are they really remembering everything that I'm saying here? I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, so again, that might just be a culture shift. I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's important still to take notes so that you can understand it and process it later on after the meeting. So I, I do think that is very, very important. Uh, and then the last thing that Angela mentioned, which is uh, making sure that you follow people, understand what it is they're doing, be willing to learn something new. Um, every job is not going to be specific to that job description. I think also young people like doing that. Oh, well, you hired me to do X, Y, and that's it. I don't want to do Z. You know, it's like you got to be able to be flexible in your flow because the, the, the industry is so much different than it used to be. Uh, and I think that, you know, we no longer have this box of jobs that we do. Uh, which is a benefit in a way because you do get to learn so many different things and those things translate into promotions and different roles within the organization. So it is very important that you have an open mindset, be willing to learn and be willing to, uh, like you mentioned, Jeanette, be confident in what it is that you were hired to do as well. So master that and make sure you meet with your manager. I think those are the key things within the first uh, month or three that you're there because they're evaluating you at that point. These are incredible tips. Incredible tips. So we went through the whole process of finding a job and starting that job. We have about two minutes left, and I think Cameron wanted to add something to the conversation as well. Cameron? Yeah, so just a couple of questions um, from students' kind of own personal experience. I think we have a lot of students who already have resumes from high school, either programs that they did or um, you know, even just applying to college. They have a resume already, but do you have recommendations for um, how to kind of continue continue to improve that resume, who to go to, what might make sense to make sure our resumes look the best they can look. This is fair. This is fair. Um, well, I think in the beginning of your career, it's always good. I think uh, College Bound has some options for you to be able to kind of have someone look at your resume. If you're in college, you definitely can go by your uh, your guidance counselor place. What do they call it in college? I forget. Your school counselor. There oh, the go, career, career development office in college. <laughs> career Have development. them look at it. Yep, I, I would definitely say that. Then I think also, again, I think as you move further into your career, you, you really need to start looking at getting it done professionally only because, again, if you look at your resume and you try to do it on your own, you will absolutely leave out some key things that you do in your career that might be, you know, really explosive to your next role. Um, but in the early parts of your career, one to five years, I would definitely say same here. Make sure you're letting someone else look at your resume, making sure, um, like Angela said, every year you need to be looking at that resume. You need to be changing it. Um, updating the skill set that you have so that it's fresh every single time. You never know when an opportunity is going to be presented, and you never know when uh, the job industry changes, you know, from inside. You know, you may, may have a job one day, and the next day you may not. So you always have to be ready for what might be coming your way. Thank you. We are at time, but Cameron has one more question. Do you guys have to run, or can I ask you one more? Can I have five more minutes, please? I'm Thank good. you. Cameron, Thank go for it. Yeah, so one more question that I know some of our students uh, are juggling when they get when they get out of college is um, they may not have the experience on their resumes yet to be able to kind of jump into a career based job, but they're also feeling the pressure to have a job and have to make money. Um, so what is your recommendation around, you know, maybe I'm navigating, well, I can do a minimum wage job or I can do a job. Um, that I can jump straight into versus waiting and kind of going through the application process for a job that is more uh, focused on my career, but I may not, it may take me longer because I don't have the experience yet. Hmm. 
I'm thinking about that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier too. I mean, that's that's like that's a tough one it because is. you need you need the experience. And how else are you going to get there unless you just step out there and apply for the job? And and that's what we as human resource folk need to you know really stand on is that we do have to hire entry level folk because you're not going to gain that experience until you step out there and apply for that job. I mean, we, we all had to start there. Yeah. None of us are new to this entry level position. So we have to, um, you just had, you just got to try. I mean, I don't know, just put it out there. Even if you do have to work that, that at another spot first, but keep your, put your resume out there as much as you can. Um, you can get, may get a whole lot of no's, but you will get that one. Yes. I guarantee. I, I guarantee. That, that kind of leads into what we're doing um, at College Brown. Also, internships are extremely important. Yes, a lot of places offer internships, and I spoke with someone yesterday who said that he may not be able to host an intern, but he can facilitate a shadow day. Someone can come in and shadow, and they can ask questions and things like that. All yes. right. And I just wanted to add a couple of quick things. Mm -hmm. When you're shadowing someone or if you're interning somewhere, make sure you add those experiences to your resume too. Yes. Or ask that person that you shadow if they're willing to be a reference for you, if you have a good relationship with them. And then another thing that because it's the age of social media, if you pop into someone's thing, their, their DMs, their messages, their LinkedIn inbox, and you like their company and you ask the question, would you be willing to create yes. an internship? Would you be willing to allow me to come in for my summer, my winter break? Would you be willing? Some people will say, you know what? Yes, we just had someone quit last week and we need help filing. You know, just mm -hmm. ask a question. You never know what company will, uh, what a company will create for you if you have that interest mm -hmm. and you have that 30 second pitch like Odell mentioned. Hey, do you have time to get on a quick call with me? I'm a recent college graduate. I'm a recent um, college freshman and I need experience with XYZ. I'm so glad you mentioned that. One last thing to it and we got to go. So she <laughs> mentioned one key thing, which is the temp, right? She mentioned that. And I think after you get out of college, one of the things we're all looking for permanent work, right? We're, we're banging, we're beating the pavement, which is the right thing to do. So use LinkedIn. And I would absolutely say on LinkedIn, there's recruiters, there's temp agencies, reach out to these temp agencies, let yes. them do the work for you because it may not be permanent, but it can turn into permanent. Yes. So they may say, oh, we're going to give you a six month, you know, you got a six month job. We, we we're saying it's that, but quite often those things turn into permanent roles. So mm -hmm. look for those temp positions as well. Uh, they will be very helpful for you. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I apologize for the extra minutes. Um, to our guests, panelists, thank you for the great information. To our guests, join us next time. Remember, we have these on the first Monday of every month. Next month, we're going to talk about building your brand. I just dropped the... Um, the link to register and see this recording into the chat so you can click there. You can register for the next event and all the other events. Um, to the guests again, thank you so much. Cameron, thank you. Everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.